My name is Edward Davis, and I'm a vertebrate paleontologist. I study extinct mammals like extinct pronghorn antelope, which is why I call this Dr. Pronghorn's Make Along Vlog. Today I'm going to show you how I resold these um, bison moccasins from L.L. Bean. Here's a flashback to the original resold video I did. I'll put a card up for you, but I resold these before. This is my first uh, resoling project. And you can see I've completely worn these soles out too, so I'm starting over again. And I have a plan to make this project better and make it more sustainable so I'll be able to do resoles again on these shoes easier and without worrying about damaging the, the uppers at all. So here I am starting out by pulling apart the new soles that I put on before, getting back down into the cork that I laid in before. And uh, before I just uh, glued those soles directly onto the, the welt. And you can see there the cork that I put in to replace the original foam. So I'm getting that out. I used ended, ended up using my uh, French beveler to get all that cork out. And here you can see the new sole and it's worn out compared to the old sole with the, uh, <laughs> the lunch order that was written on it. Watch that first video to see more. So here I'm cutting out new cork. Uh, I don't have the thick cork squares. So what I'm doing is using this uh, thin cork bulletin board material. I'm going to double it up to make it thick enough to work. I'm just using contact cement to glue the two pieces together. And while that's drying to get the glue ready, I'm going to go through and pull all the stitches because my plan is actually to stitch in a leather midsole. So the leather midsole will become uh, something of a sacrificial layer so that if I resole these again and I have to pull the new sole off, the the piece that will peel off will be this leather midsole and not the, uh, the welt piece. So that will last longer and the shoes will last longer overall. But to get it to work I need to actually pick all these stitches and then uh, I'll be able to hand stitch the new midsole in using the original holes from this original fake Goodyear welt. That, those stitches were there for display only and didn't actually connect anything. You can see that this uh, welt is sewn in just inside of where those stitches are, kind of Blake stitched on. Here I am repeating what I did on the first resole video, just using a piece of paper to trace out the voids for where the cork needs to go. This makes it easier to cut the cork pieces precisely. So I can just cut out those traced lines and then use that as a template to mark out the cork for cutting. Here we go. Just have to trace the four pieces. I only needed to uh, do the tracing on one of the two shoes because it's the same, the voids are the same shape on the two shoes. And then I just have to make sure I, I flip flop them to go left and right clearing out a little bit more of the cork just to make it nice and even. It'll all get squished together once I hammer on that midsole anyway. And here we go, gluing those uh, cork inlay pieces in and putting the glue into the shoe body for the cork pieces to go into. Here's your first high speed hammering of the video. I know some folks really love it. Now I've got to cut out that midsole. I've got a piece of, this is a seven to eight ounce veg tan leather that I bought at the Tandy Black Friday sale a couple of years ago. I think I've said this before, but I buy a lot of my veg tan during those Black Friday sales because the prices are really good to stock up and then I have enough for a year or two. And if, I have, if I've said it before, but you never know who's seen it for the first time, contact cement works by uh, painting it on and then you have to let it sit for about 15 or 20 minutes to dry. And then uh, it's not completely dry, but mostly. And then when you actually put the pieces together, only contact cement will stick to itself and then if you hammer it down, it, it causes the bond to become really strong. So what's happening is while the contact cement's drying on the shoes, I'm getting these midsoles or these insoles ready. So as you can see, the uh, foam part of the insoles has worn out. And so what I'm going to do is uh, carefully cut it off 
and replace it with this brown leather and then uh, use my sewing machine to stitch it back onto the bison leather of the rest of the insole. And I've figured out how to get the sewing machine adjusted so I can actually stitch right back into the original holes, as you'll see in a minute. So here, I, and you have to scuff up, if you want contact cement to stick to the uh, finished surface of leather, you actually have to scuff it up because that smooth surface is too smooth. This, the contact cement has to really soak in. So here you can see painting it on the back side of the leather part of the midsole that was previously there. And then I'm going to add this new piece. I'm going to go back to the midsole because the contact cement is dried enough there I can get it down. So I got to press it in place just to get it set up. And then you got to really hammer it. The harder you push, the better it sets up. You'll see some people use a hydraulic press. I don't have a hydraulic press set up to do it, so I just have to use the hammer. And I'm going to trim it down so it's right up to the original welt. Once that's done, then I can go back and hammer around the edge to get the welt really set well on the midsole. Here's the last little piece. Ping. Okay, then you use the edge of the shoe anvil to go around and hammer down that edge of the welt. So you make sure that part's set up well too. You see some people have a special tool, the crank and a pair of gears that can press down and, and hold those together. That's nice if you've got it. If I was doing dozens and dozens of shoes, I'd invest in something like that. But since I only do one every couple of months, it's not going to be a hassle. Here you go. I'm gluing the midsole together. I actually did this for both shoes, of course, and both insoles. I keep saying midsole, it's the insole, uh, but I'm only showing one. Yep, so here I go. I've got the, the stitching distance set up, getting back into one of the original holes, locking my stitch in, and then working it forward to go around the corner and then just stitch. I'm pretty happy with this. It only took me a couple of uh, tries to get the setting just right. So I'm getting used to this machine enough that I can actually eyeball these and get them pretty close. There you go, back in the same holes. That should last a lot longer than that foam. The leather's about the same thickness and uh, I haven't honestly noticed any difference in the feel as I walk. So I think it'll be good. Okay, now I'm gonna set a groove in so that as I hand stitch these midsoles on, the, the stitches sit down in it and are not proud of the leather and that way they will be um, they won't disrupt the attachment of the outsole so i'm going to use a vibram rubber outsole one of the a christie it's a white relatively hard rubber what they call the christie outsole i used the white this time just to switch it up i thought it would look a little bit more like a boat shoe that way also, I wanted something harder than before, so it lasts longer. You can see I'm actually using two colors of thread, just like I did on my cap toes, but I'm doing it more subtly. Instead of using like red and white here, I use two different shades of tan. So it's not too obvious, but I feel like if I'm gonna hand stitch, I might as well show it off. You can't, you can't get that alternating color from a machine stitch. Okay, you gotta wipe down and sand the outsoles. Wipe them down with acetone and sand them to get them to be ready to accept the contact cement. Then painting the contact cement onto the midsole surface that I also sanded so it was ready to accept it. Again, remember you can't use contact cement directly onto this regular outer leather. You have to sand it down. And here I am hammering that outsole on. And I got to go around the edge. I didn't get it framed very well, so I'm not going to show all of it. And then I tried a new thing for trimming this rubber down because the rubber is really hard to cut with a knife. I used my bandsaw and it actually worked really well. So I think I'm just going to keep doing this. It saved me a lot of time and effort. This is at four times speed, so it wasn't as, as fast as it looks. It looks super fast. It was actually much faster than the knife though. Okay, and then here I'm using my 2 set by 72 belt grinder that I originally bought for knife making to, uh, to sand down the edges of the outsoles, get them evened up so that they look real nice. 
I will get back to knife making at some point. I'm getting all set up to make folding knives. I'm going to be able to make some um, slip joint knives and eventually work my way up to lockback knives. So keep an eye peeled for that. If you're interested, go ahead and subscribe. If you like this video with these shoes, go ahead and give me a like on that. And if you haven't subscribed yet, do that. Yeah, lots, lots of white dust from the Christie's. Okay, then I got to clean up these uppers. So these shoes are my kicking around on the weekend shoes. You can see they've been kind of abused over the last couple of years since I resold them before. I got paint on them. It's a gray primer from a cabinet project I did with my daughter. There's also some wood glue. That's what I'm popping off there. I've got a video on this um, Boker Wasabi uh, folding knife. If you want to watch it, I'll put a card up for that. And then this is probably not how you're supposed to take paint off of the leather by scrubbing it like that, but that's how I did it. Cause again, these are kind of work shoes. And uh, actually once I did all of the treatments, those scrape marks disappeared. I'm pretty happy with it. They look, as you can see in just a minute, they look really sharp when they get done. Yep. So I'm used to using the uh, saddle soap here to actually burnish the edge of that welt in the midsole, as you can see. It's not like a super high shine finish, but again, these are for kind of kicking around on the weekends, working in the workshop shoes. So I wasn't going for something that was super dressy. And uh, I was just using a piece of a canvas tote bag uh, to do the burnishing. Here I'm using my Lexol two-part cleaning and conditioning system. So you gotta put on the cleaner, let it sit a little bit and then clean it off. And then you gotta put on the conditioner. This is the conditioner step here. It actually makes a huge difference to the leather, makes it so much happier. So it's something everybody should be doing probably once, at least once a year, probably more often if your shoes get wet or dirty or your boots. That just made a huge difference to the appearance of these shoes. And then they have leather laces too. So I went ahead and gave the, the laces the same treatment. So here I am cleaning them with the cleaner and then coming back with the conditioner, just getting some in my hand and then running the laces through. And, and again, it made a huge difference to not only the appearance, but also the suppleness and behavior. I had a person comment on a YouTube post that I should go ahead and put a little bevel on the outer edge of these to make them look finished. So this is what I'm doing here. And it, and it looks great. I really appreciate that. So thank you for that comment. And uh, yeah, I think it came out really nice. That was a great finishing touch. Just makes it look professional. Of course, it's not perfect, but I'm still learning. I'll be happy, happy to have this learning experience. Okay, fa final step. I do a lot in the rain. This is Oregon, after all. So I gave them a coat of Snow Seal. That's my favorite leather protectant. It's got beeswax in it, and nothing really beats it for making your leather waterproof, but it's a process. So you rub it on and then you have to get the leather warm enough that it melts. So after you get it all rubbed on, then you have to come back with the hair dryer and then heat it up till you see the snow seal melting and it'll wick into the leather and then you rub it in with a cloth. I'm using an old wool sock and then uh, that makes it waterproof and it lasts quite a while. Depends on how much you get them wet. Yeah, please please do subscribe if you haven't already. It helps me to grow the channel and I'll help you see the next shoe projects. I've got three or four of them lined up. I'm going to be dying a pair of shoes uh, and then resoling them. And then I've got a pair of wing tips that I'm going to dye and turn into uh, spectators. Or that's my hope anyway. So we'll see how that goes. Here they are all done. Um, I got a merch store too. I'll put a link if you want to buy Dr. Pronghorn t-shirts, mugs, sweatshirts, I got that going. Also, I have an Etsy store where you can buy some of the other stuff I've made. I've got uh, dop kits and keychains. So take a look. Those links will be in the description for the video. And thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, let me know in the description how you do it differently. Do you like that color of the soles? And what are you working on? What's on your workbench right now? Thanks for your time.